My name is Kelly McDonald. I may have been born with low vision, but did that stop me from living the life I wanted? No way! It barely slowed me down. Today, I'm a broadcaster, actor, sports fan, and all-around great guy. I'm also the host of my very own show, this show. I've made a bucket list of things I want to experience, people I want to meet, and places I want to see. So join me on my travels and take a look at things from my point of view. This is Blindsided with Kelly MacDonald. Welcome to Blindsided with Kelly MacDonald, where seeing is deceiving. We've got a fantastic show for you today. I roll up my sleeves and head to the Lower Town Brewery in Ottawa to experience the heat and pressure of cooking in a professional kitchen. I give my opinion on opinions in the soapbox. And we open some eyes in another edition of Ask a Blind Guy. But first, if there's one thing Canadians are known for, is that we have no problem laughing at ourselves. We might enjoy it more than even laughing at Americans. You'll find comedy festivals all across this great and goofy nation of ours. And today, we're headed to one of the best to catch some funny Canucks making yucks. Let's go day tripping. I'm here at the Durham Social to find out what's so funny in Sudbury, Ontario in February. I'm at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Festival, and alongside me is... Patrick O'Hearn, Associate Managing Director with Laugh Out Loud Sudbury. What is the festival all about? It's a great chance to bring people together to, to, to laugh, to have a good time. Every year we try to bring in some of the funniest people working in Canada so that they get to make Sudburyans laugh. What is the hardest thing about holding a festival like this in Sudbury? I think it's measuring people's excitement, knowing uh, you know what they want year after year. I think we take pride in that, but we always want to make sure we're bringing in things that are cutting edge that people are going to really gravitate towards. Well, I can't wait to get my laugh on. Well, yeah, let's get the show started right now, Kelly. All right. The highlight of the Sudbury LOL Festival is, of course, the stand-up acts. And there are tons of comics from across North America who hit the stage. And I have a perfect seat in the audience. Please join me in giving a, a big LOL welcome to Michelle Shaughnessy. Join the jam. I made the mistake of joining in January. Don't ever do that. And I made the mistake of joining in the really hot neighborhood. And I'm like, I think I need to go join another gym to get fit enough to be at this gym. <laughs> Like, everybody's staring at me, looking at me like, check out New Year's resolution over there. <laughs> I had a girl in the front row of a show raise her hand recently. She's like, I know what you're talking about, girl. She's like, I found dirty messages. I found out he was having sex with my best friend. I was like, that's heartbreaking. I was like, how did you dump him? Like, what happened? And then this woman turned on me. She was like, excuse me, dump him? Don't tell me how to handle my man. I know how to handle my man. <laughs> Like, yeah, so does your best friend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sean McLaren! And I'm trying to learn how to speak French. And these guys know they're in Sturgeon Falls. They're the experts, right? So I'm like, hey, how do you how do you say a, a hot dog in French? Is it is it like in chain show? <laughs> and he's like, no, it's in hot dog. <laughs> A lot of scientific studies have been coming out about Sudbury that proves that everybody's receptive to comedy, right? I mean, like, we're the happiest, sunniest place in Canada, you know? Oh, but uh, you also have uh, the highest incidence of chlamydia and you're the fattest. Jeff Paul! As I farted so bad in my car the other day, I had to park and get out. You ever do that? <laughs> Just left this thing running on the side of the road. I'm like, not deal with this shit right now, man. <laughs> Door wide open, keys in the ignition. If anyone stole that car at that moment, they, uh, they definitely need it more than I do. <laughs> this is what you call a pothead's body, guys. This is the body you get from smoking weed every day and just eating garbage, you know? Because I don't do hard drugs. I do the one drug that actually makes you eat and gain weight. That's my drug of choice. Cause God forbid I do a line of cocaine every now and again and skip lunch. How about a round of applause for all the comedians that were up here tonight, rocking it out for the LOL Sunbury Comedy Festival. After witnessing such great acts, I meet up with Patrick cause I have an idea. You know, I have to say I'm, I'm kind of getting an itch that I'd like to give it a shot. See what it's like to be up there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What we want you to do, though, first is, is practice. Sure, I'll spend all tomorrow in my hotel room getting ready, Pat. Thanks. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I won't let you guys down. Before going off to practice my routine, 
I'm going to ask the experts for some guidance. Jeff Paul, I need some advice. I'm getting the itch to do some stand-up. What tip can you give me? Uh, my tip to you is uh, go to school, uh -huh. um, get uh -huh. a good job, oh. and don't do stand-up. I have an empty wallet and an empty fridge at home. Do anything else but do stand-up. Michelle Shaughnessy, I've come to you for the ladies' opinion. All right. I need the best tip you have for how I can be successful on the stage. Nobody wants a yeah. faker. So, Women don't want you to fake it. That's for us to do, not uh, for you. <laughs> so Sean McLaren, I need some help. How do you prepare? Just try it, because the audience will tell you whether it works or it doesn't. But Jeff gives me the best inspirational pep talk I could have ever asked for. You're gonna suck for a really long time, and then maybe one day about eight years from now, somebody's gonna pay you $50 to open for them in a town that's maybe 50 kilometers north of Sudbury. Thanks a lot. Hey, that's the greatest uh, advice I could get. Good luck out there, pal. Oh, yeah. Good um, luck. Do, do I need run it? away? So I've got less than 24 hours to come up with an act that'll knock them dead. Easy stuff. I'm just gonna lock myself in my hotel room and focus on my material. Hi there, everybody. I'm new to town. I I came in today on. No, don't start with that. Think, think, think. You can do this. I want to come up with something good. <sighs> God, what have I gotten myself into? It's a little obscure, but they'll get the reference. It's the other way around. I messed up that line. It's only a lousy few minutes on stage making silly jokes. It's not a problem. Comedy, I mean, I do theater. Real work. Making people laugh. That's me in a nutshell. My time is up. Now I'm back at the Durham Social, one of the LLL Sudbury's event locations, ready to give this a go. Kelly, you've been practicing. This is your big debut. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to give it a shot. Let's see what you got. About a dozen other comics sit in the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the stage, making his comedy debut, Kelly McDonald. Oh, thank you, everybody. I... Hey. Huh. I know we're that polite community, but when you see a blind guy jump on the stage, face the wrong way, help him out. Especially a black guy. I'm facing that wall, talking to a wall. I felt like I should assume the position. I thought that was a good opener. Never been a school guy. Hated school. I felt kind of alone. Weren't too many of us black guys. So I recruited some. Went up to some of the white kids and just simply said, you know, we have to stick together. Do you think you'll see if we leave early? <laughs> Do you think you'll notice? This isn't going well. Better wrap this up. Thank you all, everybody. Appreciate you taking some time for me today. So what do you think? A career? I wouldn't say that. I, I, I think, you know, maybe with a little bit of practice. Uh, but for now, don't quit your day job. Bigger crowd, maybe you, you, you would have had a lot more laughs. And now for joking aside with the other side players. My blind friend Tom has been planning to propose to his girlfriend Carla for months. I've topped off your wine. Last week, after a few glasses of liquid courage, he decided he was going to do it. You seem a little nervous. Is everything OK? Oh, just fine. Not nervous at all. He was extremely nervous. So nervous that when Carla spilled wine on her blouse and left the room, he didn't notice and knelt down for the speech. Truth is, Carla, I just wanted to let you know how much these last four years have really meant to me. Uh, pal, you're talking to an empty chair. I know I'm not the most easiest person to live with, but you've stuck with me. So I was wondering if you would consider... Ah, uh, there it is, the ring, permanent. and just in time. Oh, this is gonna last forever. That's the idea. What are you doing on the floor? Let's hope the speeches at the wedding go a little smoother. Still ahead on the show, they say, too many cooks spoil the broth. Heh, I'm out to prove it only takes one. Stick around. Welcome back to Blindsided with Kelly McDonald. It's time now for a look at some of the more interesting stories in the news this week. This is your Inside Scoop. A new startup has created an app that allows blind users to connect with volunteers through their smartphones to help them identify objects. Be My Eyes could potentially connect a blind woman in Toronto with a volunteer in Australia in order to help them identify food in their fridge or read a piece of mail. 
It's really great. I've been using it to read my scripts. <laughs> hey, how am I doing, Shelly? You're not funny. I know. In other news, physicists at Germany's Max Planck Institute are preparing to turn on their Stellarator fusion device and heat hydrogen atoms to temperatures nearing the center of the sun. The energy given off by this process could provide unlimited clean power, but so far fusion reactors have failed because the reactions created give off less energy than they consume. My personal trainer says, I have the same problem. An FDA raid on a cheese factory in Pennsylvania revealed that the manufacturer was doctoring its 100% real Parmesan product with fillers like cheddar tailings and wood pulp. Experts estimate that 20% of cheese products in the United States are mislabeled. If you're a glass half empty kind of guy, this is troubling. But if you're a glass half full kind of person, this means your table saw in your garage is covered in cheese. And that's your inside scoop. I love food. I make no secret of that fact. It's amazing to me how chefs are able to take raw ingredients and turn them into delectable dishes without the help of a recipe. I have trouble making a bowl of cereal. Though it may not be as glamorous as skydiving or race car driving, I've always wanted to learn how to cook like a pro. Today, I get my chance. Let's check something off my bucket list. I'm in the kitchen of the Lower Town Brewery, which is in Ottawa's Bywood Market. And with me to help me cross off my desire of being a chef from my bucket list is head chef Kyle Mortimer Prue. Hello, chef. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm ready to start. Oh, yeah? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not quite ready yet, all right? No? We got to get you looking like a chef. Oh. Make sure you're protected with your apron. OK. We got to get right. this hat off. Oh, I don't know thank about you. This thing all right. Here. I'll Let's let you that. dispose of that. Let me get you all looking sharp, all right? Thank you. You're wearing a pretty cool hip butcher apron here. Oh, this is nice. So tell me a little bit about the things in the kitchen that I'm going to have to be working with. I'm going to get you to smell this. You ready for this? Oh, oh, smoke, beautiful <laughs> smell. So that's our smoked ham hock. That's really going to be a, a great flavor in the split pea and ham hock soup that we're going to make today. First things first, we got to do a lot of prep, all right? OK. Carrots that you've got to peel. We've got celery you've got to dice. We've got onions you've got to dice. Yeah. There's a lot to go through. OK, so who starts doing all that? Oh, that's Where you. That's you. Oh. You got to start from the bottom and work your way up. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is peel the carrots. So the carrots are in front of you on your right. board. Thank you, chef. I'm going to move that knife out of your way. All right, thank you. And there's a peeler in your right hand, OK? Superb. So grab yourself a carrot and start peeling, and I'll see you in a little while, all right? All right. With Chef Kyle stepping out to look after meat in the smoker, I'm left with the high status job of vegetable prep. Fine way to start in the kitchen, peeling carrots. Aren't you done yet? Oh, uh, well, sort of. Who did this? Look, you're missing all sorts of places. Oh. Is this your first day in a kitchen? Actually, chef, it is. You ready for a hand? I'll help you out here. Yeah, please. All right, now the carrots are going to roll around a little bit, so maybe I'll give you the onions that I peeled instead. How big are the pieces I'm cutting this? In? So I'd love you to cut a nice small dice for me. You're going to cut it straight across. Like, I got it now. Yeah, but halfway. Exactly, and then just work your way left and then right okay. about a centimeter at a time if you can. Is this? Cutting and everything all part of what you as a chef do? Not all the time. But the important thing about being a chef is that when you're leading a team, you need to understand how to do all the tasks that you're asking of them. Right. So that's why you need to work your way up to being a chef. That's it. I, I would never ask anything of any member of my team that I wouldn't do myself. So the best part about this soup is that we're going to end up pureeing at the end. So if your cuts are a little uneven, it's not an issue, OK? Oh, awesome. <laughs> Back in school, I remember spending six hours in one class learning how to cut everything to precise measurements. Oh. And then at the very end, when I was done cutting up liters of three millimeter by three millimeter carrots, we made a soup in it and the whole thing got pureed. It didn't even oh. matter. Well, you know the, the negative thing about onions, it's crying. <laughs> There's no crying in the kitchen, oh, Kelly. Oh. You can't do that. So we've got a pot on the stove that's preheating. Once you have that onion cut, we're going to turn around, add it to the pot, and start cooking the uh, the basis for this soup, OK? I think I'm ready here. Onions are chopped. Okay, so here are your so onions. you've got the onions put in okay. a bowl for me. Yeah, so the pot. To my right. right. Oh, there, it's already so preheated. So it's hot, just dump it right in. OK, doesn't matter where. Oh! Ooh. 
And here's a spatula I'm going to put in your left hand. Give this a little bit of a stir. There's a lot of heat coming out of it. It's a hot environment, eh? Oh, is it ever. So I've just added the carrots, celery, and garlic, OK? I'm stirring away in the pot. It's got a beautiful onion smell. You can smell the garlic now working. So that's the interesting part of cooking. You use your, your sense of smell. You use your uh, hearing. I can be 15 feet away, and I can hear if the pot's too hot when my cooks are adding something to it. So that's looking great. So we're going to add in the uh, split peas now. OK. I'm just going to pour some of these in. And now you definitely want to stir because we don't want these to stick to the bottom. OK. If you burn it, I'm not going to be happy. OK. So we're going to add the ham hock. OK. Which smells delicious, if you remember. Does it ever. Oh. We have a sachet, okay. just to add some more flavors to the pot. And now I'm going to add a little bit of water. All right, give that a good stir once more. OK, great. I'm going to adjust the temperature. Now you've got about four hours to kill before this is ready. Ooh. Lucky for us, there's a pinball machine in the restaurant. It's your turn, buddy. OK. All right, you're in play. Okay. There you go. There you go. It's on your right flipper. Oh, look at you go. <laughs> yeah. Good ball. Woohoo! You're <laughs> You're doing a great ball. Look at that. Back into the kitchen we go. All right, Kelly, this looks great. Uh, it's cooked down nicely. Now, one of the most important things we have to do is taste it before we serve it to the guests. Yes, we do. All right. So here's a spoon for you. Oh, awesome. All right. Okay. Just dip it in there a little bit. There you go. There it's in. Go. Bring it and taste it. Mmm. How's that? Oh, can you ever taste the pea? Mmm. That doesn't sound great. That's, no, not, a, it doesn't. that's not a good peak. marketing campaign. Yeah, I can taste that smoke taste. All right, we're going to serve this up now. You ready for that? Over the bowl. Yeah. Bottom Four. Of the thing and pour it in. There you go. From the scoop. Looks great. I'm going to get you to put this in the window for the servers, OK? So window being past pass, where I was yeah. cutting up onion, stretch out. There you go. To the higher counter, and somebody will get it. Call service, though. Otherwise, they won't know. Oh, service. It's a packed house inside the restaurant for lunch service, and it's all hands on deck to get everyone fed. So I'll take one for the team, hang up my apron, and help with the service. All right. What do we got? So what am I bringing to the table? All right, so we have our habitat soup. OK. Warm right. bread and butter, and you're good to go. All right. Jesse, will you walk me out? Yeah. And thank, thank you. you, fellow server Jesse, for showing me the ropes. And I think uh, the table's up here and on my left. Right up to the table. All right. Hello, everybody. Hi. I believe, sir, this is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Bon appetit. All right, Kelly, so can you cross this one off your bucket list? Indeed, I can. Thank you so much, Chef. Hey, you're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> but the, the day's not over yet, eh? You got time to lean, you got time to clean. Oh. Here's a rag. All right. See you soon. Thanks, Chef. Coming up, the power of a point of view. And we hit the street to let the people ask a blind guy. We'll be back in a bit. Welcome back to Blindsided with Kelly McDonald. Time to climb onto my soapbox. Do you notice lately, everybody seems to have an opinion, and they're not afraid to tell anyone. Whether it's at the coffee shop, on a morning talk show, or on social media, everybody's telling everybody their opinion. I'm not really sure what's driving this. Maybe it's better access to soapboxes. Perhaps the most interesting part is everybody's getting into the act. And when I say everyone, I mean people like me. Disabled people have learned to speak up. Express yourself. Don't be shy. As my dad used to say, you don't ask, you don't get. Expressing an opinion has leveled the playing field. There's more services, more help and generally more awareness of a population that has generally been underserved. Empowerment has made me realize that expressing an opinion, being inclusive, is a good thing. Now, if we could just start listening to each other more. That's the way I see it. In this episode of It's a Service Dog's Life, Service dog Olivia has an itch she can't scratch. Uh, where's the taxi? Don't worry, Olivia. We'll get you home soon so you can take your flea medicine. You just sit tight with your doggy friend Bailey. Did she say flea medicine? I, I don't know what she's talking about. Hey, don't worry. I had fleas last year. Worms the year before that. I think I got them from rotten fish I ate on the beach. OK, too much information, Bailey. I'm just lucky I have a great vet, or I'd still be scratching. Tell me about it. They're driving me crazy. 
On the plus side, the human hides the pills in hot dogs. Whichever dog convinced humans we wouldn't eat pills unless they were hidden in food was a genius. Humans are so easy to train. Hey, can you scratch my back? Ew, no way. You ate a rotten fish, but this is ew? You've got fleas. I don't like hot dogs that much. It's time for Ask a Blind Guy with my new friend, Scott. Hey, Kelly. So being blind, do people play more pranks on you, or, uh, or are you pretty exempt from the pranks in life? Uh, I wish I could say I was, but yeah, one of the most common pranks to play is by friends, of course. If you're being guided, hanging onto their elbow, they're walking along, they lower themselves, so you think you're about to go downstairs that they forgot to tell you about. Last time that was played on me was by someone pretty close to me, my dad. So yes, to answer your question, yeah, man. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> it's time for the selfie challenge. Let's end the show today with another entry in our selfie challenge. This is a picture of Krista Nasser and her service dog, Jorinda, when Krista graduated from college in 2015. She says that before going blind, she was an average student. But she decided to go back to school after losing her sight. She graduated on the Dean's Honor Roll. Congratulations, Krista. Can being blind make you smarter? If you've got a story like Krista's, we'd love to hear it. Tweet a photo or short video to at AMI Kelly Mac or post it on the Accessible Media Inc. Facebook page. And we might feature you on the show. That's all for another episode of Blindsided with Kelly McDonald. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week. And now for the important people. Executive producers, Nat Abraham, Ira Levy, Michael McGuigan, Peter Williamson, and Chantal Jackson. Produced and directed by James Murdoch. Story producer, Amy Blythe. Director of photography, Suave Hoopa. Editor, Matthew Walsh. DV consultant, Ron Rickford. Joking aside, performed by the Out of Sight Players. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Produced and distributed by Breakthrough Entertainment. An AMI original production.